Welcome, welcome to all you beautiful mindsetters. Welcome to the Math Literacy Session. I hope that you guys are well and ready and that you've had a great, great, great day leading up to this moment and that you're ready to spend this hour with me. You are tuned in with Lebohang Dube and we are doing Math Literacy. But before I can continue, I'd like to first thank Liberty. Thank you to Liberty for helping me bring all this content to you guys at home. And I hope you guys are well and ready. If you haven't sent any of your questions through, please send them using the tutor function on our Tenfold Education app. Do not stay behind, guys. We need to be going hand in hand. Today, we are doing some revision and I do have some questions prepared. The question that we are going to be starting with is a maps and plan question. So when it comes to maps and plans, what you do want to always remember is that you won't always get the same type of map. So you need to go through as many maps as possible so that you are not caught off guard. The particular one that we are starting with is a, a train seating setup. Let's look at it. So it says to us here, the seating plan below represents the seating arrangement in a coach of a train. So we've got that one coach um, of a train happening there. We've got the aisles in the middle. We've got the toilet at the back. Um, as you know, I'd, I like to always just analyze before I go anywhere. Um, we've got our north going that way. So we already know that if that's north, then we, we've got our eats sour worms normally eat sour worms so we know that we would have our e there our s there and we would have our west going on over there so it's important for you to know your general directions in terms of that because you could be asked a question where they want the general direction and then it says to us that we've got the front of the coach there and the back of a coach there if you've never been in a train the coach looks something like this and then you've got your aisle um, happening in the middle there where people can walk down the door looks the same as the door of um, a normal house plan so you can see we've got one two doors there and then we've got a little toilet with its own door um, going on over there the aisles um, the seats are then numbered with the alphabet so you'd say a one b one and then A2 and so on and so on. So if you were ever given something similar, like a, a theater, you know, when you're going to um, a cinema, a theater, you would have something similar in terms of them naming the rows that way. And then another interesting thing we have here, which is not foreign, is the keys. So we are told that that would represent a window over there, a door, a seat without a power socket and a seat with a power socket. So the power sockets are then represented by the stars. I've already done my analysis, which is really, really um, important. It is important for us to look at the analysis um, and analyze whatever we've been given before we jump into the questions, because sometimes then we get all confused and we don't know how to interpret it. Let's look at the first question. The first question says to us, how many passengers can be seated in one coach? That's very simple because all we need to do is go um, and count the number of seats that are there. I am going to go and count them um, one by one. So let's look at that. So we do have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know already that I can just, okay, six seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I can make that 24 and I can make that 36, um, 48, and then I can count again, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. So 60 people can be seated on this particular train. I am gonna write it over there. So that's gonna be 4.1.1. So 50, passengers stunning so that was like a really nice um simple easy one the next question says to us write down the number of the seat close to the window and the toilet so let's go and see which one is close to the window and the toilet so we have the seat that is close to the window 
and the toilet. So that one over there is not close to the toilet, so we cannot count that. So that seat would then be K1. How do I know it's K1? It's in row K, and then we've got that one going on over there. So I would write that simple, simple, simple as K1. So we're still playing around um, with the easier set of marks over there. 4.1.3. 4.1.3 asks us the following. In which general direction um, is the toilet from seat 6B? B6, I mean. So we're going to have to go and then look at B6 and then look at where the toilet is and then look at which general direction is in. So it's B6. B6, so this is B over here. I'm just going to erase this other stuff so that it doesn't confuse us. And then I'm going to look for 6. B6 is this over here. And then the toilet is all the way down here, meaning that you would have to have it going all the way down there. Now, when you're working with general directions, the first thing that you have to say is whether it's, it's north or south. So we know already that going up is north. So going down is automatically going to be south. So the first thing I'm going to say is that the toilet is south. And then I have to say whether it's going to be east or west. And I can tell already here that it's going to be southeast. So I can't say east-south. Southeast, I either start with north or I start with south. And then I mention my east or west. So it's going to be southeast. So please be careful when you are answering such questions. Sometimes you might get the, the answer, sometimes you might not. Southeast. 4.1.4. So I hope that you guys are paying attention in terms of the requirements. What exactly is being required of us? Okay. 4.1.4 says to us, determine the probability a question such as probability can just be put into anything. So you need to always, always be prepared when it comes to probability. Always know how to do probability in a lot of different situations. So here it says to us, determine the probability as a percentage. So already I know whatever fraction that I'm going to be getting, I'm going to automatically turn it into a percentage. If I was just asked for determine the probability, I was just going to leave it as a, a fraction. But because already it's telling me to leave my answer as a percentage, I will then um, multiply whatever fraction I get by 100. So let's see how we're going to do that. It says determine the probability as a percentage of randomly selecting a seat with a power point in this coach. I need you guys to pay attention to this one. So the first thing that we are going to do is find out how many seats there are in total. And we already know that. So that is automatically going to be our denominator. Once we know how many seats we have in total, and that is our denominator, we then go and count how many seats have power um, pockets in them. So let's go and count how many seats have power sockets, sorry. So we know that, let's just make our screen clean so that it doesn't confuse us. So power socket, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I saw another one, seven, eight, nine. So that becomes my numerator. Okay. So I know that probability is a fraction. And I know that my total number of seats is 50. And I know that I have, I said that I've got six, seven, eight, nine. So nine becomes my numerator. And in 9 being my numerator, I then, because I was told to leave it as a percentage, I multiply by 100. And multiplying it by 100 then gives it to me as a percentage. Let's go see. 9 divided by 50. 
9 divided by 50 is 9 over 50 times 100. That gives me 18. So it means that 18 is my answer. So it means that the probability of randomly selecting a C to the power socket is 18%. It's a very low chance, guys, because it's below 25. Um, so it's not... It's not not possible. It is possible, but it's not likely. I would put it under the not likely category. Okay. 4.1.5 says, A man seated on J2 uses the following route to move to another seat. So now we are being given a direction. In terms of maps and plans, you could be asked for a direction. So you, you could be the one that's giving the direction they could be saying to you this person is on j2 and this person um, needs to go to the toilet direct them how would they go to the toilet so in this particular case we've been given the directions and we need to follow the directions that we have been given so let's see what directions we've been given so that we can apply them to the map again i'm going to just clean my map my map again um, so that i have a nice clean um, space to work with so it's it, the first thing that it says to me this person is at j2 j2 is this seat okay and if this person is at j2 they are now turning left and they walking towards the aisle so it means that this person is then walking towards the aisle they moving out left turning towards the aisle and in them walking towards the aisle, he turns left to continue straight until he reaches the front of the coach. So this person then continues to walk until they reach the front of the coach. Perfect. He then turns right and sits in the middle seat. So if this person is going to turn right, right is going to be that way. Middle seat is going to be there which is going to be A5. It says to us, we need to write down, um, and that's two marks. So 4.1.5, this person is going to end up on A5. There we go. Stunning. So we've got that in terms of um, our general directions and what to do in terms of that. So I hope that you got some light in terms of the little things that I was saying. First thing that I said to you guys um, that I feel like you need to remember is the general direction. No, no, no. It's, yeah, the general direction in terms of your north, south, east, west. No, it won't be put there for you. You won't have north, east, south, west. You need to know that if they've said this is north, where your east is going to be, where your west is going to be, where your south is going to be. That's very, very important. And then know that if you are asked for the general direction, that you always start with either north or you start with south, and then you are followed by your east and your west. That's the first thing that I want you guys to remember. The second thing I want you to remember, whenever you are asked for a seat number or a row number or whatever the case is, always start with the alphabet and then give the number because when you start with the alphabet and then give the number you are um, giving a better sense of direction the next thing that you need to know is that when you are giving um okay no the next thing that you need to know is that when you are asked for probability it's going to be a fraction but if they ask you to represent it as a percentage you multiply that by 100.